Howdy, with this video I want to go over essay 2, it's going to be the one on poetry, the one everybody looks forward to. Um, uh, right now I'm doing this video on Wednesday, July 3rd. Uh, you've turned in your sonnet last night, or you're supposed to at least. Um, and I love writing sonnets, It's just I'm just a nerd that way. I get paid to do it once or one or two days out of the year, so it's kind of fun for me. Uh, it might be torture for students, I don't know. Um, but hopefully it, it turned out pretty nice. and. Uh, you're going to give it to the person you wrote it to if you wrote something nice about them. Uh, people like to receive poems from each other. It's kind of interesting. Uh, for Friday, uh, response number nine is due. Uh, that's just a, a review of the poetry, learning how to quote, uh, getting a little practice in there. Uh, then next week, we're going to start on essay two. The first paragraph's due on Tuesday the 9th. Uh, it's going to be like essay one. That's going to be kind of a check-in. I just want to see the first paragraph, make sure you've landed on a, on a poem you want to use. Uh, you, you're going to choose from eight on the assignment sheet. Uh, make sure you're kind of getting going on that and you understand what I'm looking for. I uh, don't want you to write the whole essay and have me go like, nope, that's not it. Uh, there's no fun there. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Look at that first paragraph. If you have two paragraphs, so it's, you know, send more than one there. Uh, full drafts due on next Friday the 12th. Uh, we'll take a look at that just like we did with essay one. And then uh, essay two and a self-review is going to be due on the 16th. Uh, after that, there's just about four more weeks of class, so it, it's it's going to start moving a little bit faster. Uh, feels like it's moving pretty quickly anyway, but uh, uh, we'll get we'll, we're able, it's, it's doable. Um, I want to go over the essay assignment. Hmm, how do you want to do this? Uh, just all this is located on the content page. I uh, got myself off of there. Hold on. Uh, right now, it's on uh, at the very bottom of the content page under Material for Essay 2. I'll move that up once uh, we're done with Response 9 and pull down Essay 1 because most of you are done with that. Um, but all the material is right there. I'm going to go over the poetry essay assignment uh, sheet and then how to write a good poetry explication. Uh, and there's the assignment. Um, it's a little shorter. There's no research involved in this essay. It's just you against a poem. Are you working with a poem? That's not a good way to phrase it, really. Um, and you got eight poems to choose from there. Uh, and an explication uh, is a line by line or stanza by stanza informed response to the, the poem. Um, basically, just start at the beginning. Uh, you're going to show me what you're seeing happening in the poem, how the poem is working, uh, at least as you see it. Uh, so it's not you know just your opinion. It's going to be your informed response. You're a college student halfway through a Comp 2 class. Hopefully, you can uh, analyze a poem or, you know, Make a good effort at it. Uh, but keep in mind, the, the whole idea of an explication is to unfold the poem, to expand to what you see happening in, within each line. Uh, and for some people, that's a little difficult. I tend to be somebody who likes to summarize things and, you know, just get it down to one sentence. Well, that's not what an explication does. You have to kind of expand on what you're seeing and discuss what you're seeing. Uh, it's a great critical thinking exercise uh, that you use in life all the time. If you have to fire somebody, Generally, you got to write it out. You got to explain exactly all the steps it took to get to this point where you're terminating uh, this person. Uh, are you going to end up paying a whole lot on your unemployment insurance, right? Um, same thing if you make a mistake at work. If a bridge falls down, the engineer just can't go like, well, fall down, go boom. Uh, they're going to, somebody's going to ask for an explanation about uh, what was happening with this construction project and why it failed. And they're going to want some pretty detailed an unfolding of, of the events that uh, led up to that failure. Uh, same thing if somebody dies in a hospital, by, especially with an accident, um, you got to kind of go back and unfold what, what happened uh, to get to where, to where everything ended up at that point. Uh, same thing with these poems. You're going to look at the poem and kind of unfold it and show us how it's working, uh, the connections that are being made, uh, and what's going on there. Hopefully in a more positive <laughs> example than what I was just giving there. Um, there's no biography, there's no research. Uh, if you do, it's a zero. Um, and uh, you're gonna have all the fun punctuation. We're gonna be using some of these poetry terms, which I'll cover in a video. Uh, no it or you. Uh, you're not telling me what I'm seeing in the poem, you're telling me what you're seeing in the poem. So there's no need to use the word you in there. Uh, unless it's a direct quote from the poem. Uh, but be careful here, there's, there's no, no research, no biography. Most of these you probably can't do biography. Uh, one or two you can. Uh, but I don't want you to, if you start doing that, I'm just going to go like, no, <laughs> I'll probably just send it back to you. It's like, no, there's no, it's just you and the poem. 
Uh, and those are the terms you're, you're going to use. You've got to use uh, any seven of those, which will be fairly easy to do uh, once we get into it. I uh, want to go over. Yeah, where'd it go? Oh, here we go. Uh, when you think about an explication, it's a much different essay than the first essay. Um, and really, to get into a poem, you got to kind of read through it carefully. You got to read it out loud. Uh, you got to circle words you don't understand or you know, put question marks by lines that are like, I have no clue, but I got to move on. <laughs> Uh, but when you go back and do your explication, you're going to have to talk about every single line and all these things that are might be creating some ambiguity within your within your own mind there. Um, but with an explication, there's no introduction paragraph, there's no concluding paragraph. You start with line one or stanza one and just get straight into it. Um, again, no biography, no research. Uh, and, and line one of the poem, Damp Virginia Late Summer, something starts happening. And that's what you're going to talk about. Um, so it's kind of a little different, you know. There's no, you know, since the dawn of time, poetry has been written. Kind of, kind of beginnings to the essay. Just in line one of this poem, here's what I'm starting to see. Um, and you're gonna try and take us through the poem in a straight line as possible. Try not to jump around. Don't try not to go like, oh yeah, I'm back in, you know, you know, line two. This was happening, but now we're back in uh, down here in line 34. Uh, you want to kind of take us um, stanza by stanza, line by line, uh, straight through the poem. Uh, you don't want to skip any major sections. Uh, just because you don't understand something 100% doesn't mean you shouldn't be talking about it, right? Um, that's a little different. It's not a math problem, so to speak. It's uh, you trying to unfold the poem as you see it. Um, it's kind of, a, kind of like, again, it's a, it's a very, very interesting critical thinking exercise. No I, you, you, or it. Uh, it's a formal essay. Uh, unless it's a direct quote. Uh, like I said, you want to use those terms. Uh, very important, you're going to be using uh, frequent short quotes throughout the explication to show us where you're, where you're getting your ideas from. Uh, if you kind of start saying, well, Dan Virginia Lake Summer is obviously about Obamacare, I'm, I'm going to be like, what? <laughs> uh, and I'm going to expect you to give some quotes to support what you're saying. And if you can't do that, that's a good sign you're kind of going off in, a, in the wrong direction there. Um, you're going to start using line numbers. Uh, you want to kind of avoid long quotes. Uh, some of the poems you might, like Damp Virginia Late Summer, there's some very short lines, so you might end up doing a long quote. Um, but you want to stay focused on analyzing the poem. Like, for example, there's a poem uh, called Basic Training. Uh, and, you know, if you've been in, in the military and gone through basic training, you might mention that. And that's fine, but you don't want to go off, go off on a 500-word 500 500 story about you in basic training. You want to stay focused on what's happening in the poem. Um, as always, make sure you introduce and comment on any quotes you use. Uh, quotes support what you say. They don't say it for you. Uh, don't make a quote of its own sentence. Uh, some people seem to have some trouble with brackets and ellipses. We might go over that a little bit uh, later on. Uh, but you want to end the explication on the last line of the poem, and that's it. No concluding paragraph. Don't go back and repeat what you've already said. Please don't do that. Um, it's a short essay. Uh, you're expecting the reader to kind of have already read the poem and to be ready to hear what you have to say about the poem. Um, and for short essays like this, you don't really need to repeat uh, what you've already said. I kind of noticed there's no real concrete thesis statement for this essay. Uh, you're just starting at line one and going to the last line and in a straight line. Um, and you'll discuss themes and ideas as you, as you do that. So I'm not really looking for a thesis statement like we did in the first one. No introduction, no conclusion. Uh, so the 800 words, it seems shorter, but it's, it's no fluff here, right? <laughs> Uh, we're not padding our essays with the introduction or conclusion. Uh, there's eight poems to choose from. Uh, they're listed here on the assignment sheet. I just switched documents here. I'm back on the poetry essay assignment. Uh, first one, Damp, Virginia, late summer. Damp, Virginia is a small coal mining town in southwest Virginia, if you don't know that. Uh, the poem kind of discusses what's happening in the town. Uh, some of the things that <laughs> it's just kind of having its revenge, so to speak. Um, a Woman with Black Balloons by Gene Wagner. A very good poem, uh, but not an easy one. It's uh, just kind of comparing balloons to people in different ways. Uh, and it gets kind of interesting. Uh, love for vocabulary sometimes. Uh, umphalos, if that's even how you say it. Uh, you're going to have to look that word up and figure out what it means and what's happening in the poem and why she uses that word. Um, but a very interesting poem. But again, some of these poems, you're going to read it and kind of go like, eh, no. <laughs> Uh, but if you do that to all eight, you have to go back and say, okay, which one do I hate the least, right? Um, but try to pick different types of poems uh, so that maybe you can land on one without too much pain. 
Uh, the Dog in the Night is a very fascinating poem, uh, but it's one of those you get to the end and go like, okay. <laughs> uh, and you have to have to go back and uh, figure out what you think is happening in a poem. Uh, this is also a challenging poem. There's no stanzas. Uh, like I suggested, uh, generally the best way to do this explication is go stanza by stanza, spend a paragraph on each stanza. So like with the Dan Virginia poem, you got five stanzas, the stanzas being the collections of lines there. There's line, there's stanza one, and there's stanza two. Uh, you got five stanzas, uh, spend a paragraph on each stanza, five paragraph essay. Uh, not like the formulaic one, uh, we kind of worked with a little bit with, with the first essay, but uh, you don't have to think about how many, you know, uh, a paragraphs you're going to use. Uh, the Dog in the Night's a little different. It's just one long stanza, so you're going to figure out how you're going to break up your essay a little bit. Don't just give me one huge long paragraph on the Dog in the Night. You're going to have to figure out how you're going to, you know, chunk it a bit and section it out. Uh, so, you know, each poem has its own challenges there. Uh, numerology um, by Kathleen Harris. Uh, kind of a fun little poem about turning seven and how it's kind of a magical age. Uh, at least till your mother <laughs> gets a hold of you. <laughs> uh, uh, the Descent by William Carlos Williams, uh, a famous writer, a uh, modernist writer. Uh, but again, we're not doing biography. I don't care that he lived in New Jersey and was a medical doctor. I just don't care. It's you and the poem uh, that he wrote called The Descent. Um, and it's kind of about the end of life. Uh, it's a very ambiguous poem. So if some students love that. They can kind of uh, you know, bring, the, bring a lot of their own experience into the poem. Uh, other students are like, no, <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Um, so kind of a different kind of poem there. Uh, one of my favorite poems, to be honest. But uh, it's fun to see what students see in that poem. Uh, this be the simile. Uh, it says unpublished. You don't know the author. Good thing about that is you don't have to put it on a work side page. It's not published. Um, but uh, making kind of a reference here, Philip Larkin's not writing this poem. Uh, sometimes poets will say, hey, I'm referring to this uh, other poem by this person. Uh, this poet's uh, referring back to Philip Larkin's This Be the Verse. Uh, and it might be interesting to go, uh, you know, read that poem and see if, how you can relate it to this one, at least to get started in your explication. Um, uh, there, is a, there is a bad word in Philip Larkin's poem, This Be the Verse, so don't read it with your three-year-old there. Um, but this one has its challenge. It's a little shorter. Uh, to get to the 800 words, you got to, you know, really, really be able to unfold what's happening in each line and tell us what you, what you see happening there. Uh, Demolition Derby uh, by Sherman Pearl. Um, another challenge here. It's just one, one long stanza. You got to figure out how you're going to break your essay down. Uh, you know, where the breaks in the poem happen and, you know, break your paragraphs, uh, there. Um, likes to write about his relationship with, uh, with his son or his children. Um, and then his, uh, the last one's Basic Training, also by Sherman Pearl. Uh, seems like a pretty straightforward poem about basic training. Uh, then all of a sudden there's somebody else in the poem. <laughs> and you got to figure out what's going on there and why he's included this person in the poem. Um, so eight very different poems. Again, hopefully you're going to land on one and be able to work with it. Uh, you're going to have to. <laughs> um, but again, I tried to pick uh, different types of poems so everybody could find one they could work with. Um, uh, the challenge, generally the first 500 words come pretty quickly. Then you're kind of like, wow, how do I do now? <laughs> I'm done. It's like, no, you got to go back and really think about working with the lines a little bit more. Uh, but certain things like colors, uh, you want to kind of pause and kind of look at why the yellow leaf. Uh, why are the trees silver? Uh, and kind of, you know, in your explication, talk about colors and words that kind of pop out and how they interact with uh, other things going on in the poem. Uh, but that's kind of the assignment. Like I said, it's, it's and one, in some ways it's easier where there's no research, and it's just you and the poem, but also the challenge is it's just you and the poem. You can't rely on somebody else's words or ideas to, to get you through this essay. Um, you're definitely going to find this a uh, real sentence structure challenge. Uh, how do I keep my paragraphs focused? How do I introduce these quotes and still make grammatical sense to my sentences? Uh, so a lot of go a lot of things going on here. And again, I, it's a great critical thinking exercise uh, with a lot of applications outside just poetry. Uh, but I'm going to get off here. We'll talk about the sample essay here in a minute. But we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.